So this vlog is a little bit different. This isn't actually something that I was there for, nor is this something that I recorded, but this is someone that I'm very proud of and someone that I care a lot about. Uh, I'm going to share with you the video of my mom doing the moth story hour. And she tells this story and she works really hard on it and she got a lot of good laughs and I'm really proud of her. She is definitely the person who gave me my sense of humor and the person who made me laugh and smile so much in my life. So I hope that this video makes you smile and I hope you appreciate how sweet my mom is. All right, I'm a lightbulb goody two shoes. Like, on a scale of one to ten, I'd be like, what, Marty, like 25? <laughs> um, so, tonight I have a confession to make. And it's, it's guilt that I've lived with my, almost my entire life, since I was 16 years old. So, for the older people in the audience, you're going to relate to some of this, and the younger people, just bear with me. So, anyway, I was 16 years old, I pulled a birthday prank and I'm still feeling guilty about it. <laughs> so it was 1980, I was a senior in high school, and you couldn't swing a dead cat in my friend group without knocking over at least a half a dozen people named Sue. <laughs> so <laughs> it might be a little confusing to you, so I'm gonna keep count while we go, okay? So the first Sue, her name was Sue Lane. She was turning 17 that weekend. My best friend, Sue Ritter, she and I, we wanted to pull a prank on Sue. But first we were gonna to have to figure out where she would be that night. So we're at the lunchroom and cafeteria in the high school, you know, and a third Sue from across the lunch table, she says, that's easy. Sue Lane has a date to the movies with Dave Coma on her birthday. So we're like, perfect. We know where she's gonna be and how long she's gonna be there. And so we hatched a plan that while they were in the movies, we were gonna wrap their car like an enormous birthday present because this is the kind of shenanigans that Goody Two Shoes get into. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about it, we're strategizing. A fourth Sue, who's sitting to my right in the cafeteria, she says, listen, you can't do this without balloons. You have to top it off with balloons. Balloons make a festive touch. <laughs> Goody Two Shoes again, right? Duly noted, okay. So, so my best friend Sue Ritter and I, we go home that night after school. We rummage through our mother's uh, craft closets and we borrow all the birthday paper we can find. And when I say borrow, what I really mean is steal. And yes, I'm still feeling guilty about that too. Sorry, mom. Sorry, Mrs. Ritter. Anyway, in the meantime, a fifth Sue, I am not making this up, these stories have to be true. A fifth Sue, she's doing the reconnaissance to figure out what kind of car Sue and Dave will be driving that night. The older people in the audience, you'll know this, you might even want to sing along. It was a Plymouth Volari station wagon. <laughs> you know, you could, even the young people, you know this car. It's a big boat. It's got that fake wood grain paneling on the outside. And on the interior, seats made of rich Corinthian leather, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> anyway, it was big, it was green, it was ugly, and Sue Ritter and I had no problem finding it in the parking lot of the Cineplex that night. We wrapped that sucker from bumper to bumper. And then we took the balloons that Sue number four had provided, and we, we, we put them up the antenna, across the roof. I mean, it was a thing of beauty. Sue Ritter posed in front of it like this, and I took her picture, but you know, this was pre-internet, so it didn't go viral, but we got it still. <laughs> and um, anyway, then we crouched behind a neighboring car, waiting for Sue Lane and her date Dave to come out of the, of, of the theater. And I'm telling you, we felt like a couple of Charlie's Angels on a stakeout. I mean, this is exciting for Goody Two Shoes, right? And uh, so we wait and we wait, and all of a sudden people start pouring out of the theater. And before you know it, a crowd forms around the car that we wrapped. This was going way better than expected, because now Sue is going to come out, she's going to see the big present car, and then there were going to be all these strangers wishing her a happy birthday. So, Sue Ritter and I are now giddy with anticipation. Like, we're gonna wet our pants, we're so excited. <laughs> and then, you know, we hear this loud bang. 
And here's this woman, she stepped out of the crowd and she's plucking balloons off of Dave Coma's antenna and she's popping them. Like, <laughs> like what the heck? We spent an hour and a half wrapping this car and this woman is just messing with it and our friend Sue Lane has not even seen it yet. And then one of these phenomenons happened like you see on the local news. I know you guys have seen this. There's like an otherwise peaceful crowd that all of a sudden turns ugly. <laughs> like a mob mentality kicks in. And before you know it, this other guy, he steps out of the crowd, right? And he goes over to Dave's car. He starts pulling the paper off the car, throwing it on the ground like a toddler at a birthday party who doesn't understand that the present isn't for him. <laughs> and then, then the worst thing of all happened. These two people had the nerve to get into Dave Coma's car and drive away. <laughs> That's right, they drove away. I tell you that denial is a really powerful thing because <laughs> Sue Ritter and I took an embarrassingly long amount of time to realize that just as we had one too many Sue's in our lives at that point, there were also multiple Plymouths. <laughs> and we had clearly wrapped the wrong one. So now, in its wake, there was this crime scene of birthday wrap with our fingerprints all over it. <laughs> and it resembled the chalk outline of a 1978 Plymouth Valori station. <laughs> so, okay, you know, I'm goody two shoes now. I'm, uh, now I gotta. <laughs> so, um, so, we're gonna finish this up. So, so, she and I, we really start to panic because we can't afford to have tampering with private property <laughs> on the most important document of a goody two shears, two shoes' life, you know it, the permanent record. <laughs> so, so we did what we had to do, we destroyed the evidence. We scooped up all the gift wrap, we chucked it in the hatchback of my sister's car that we had borrowed that night. My sister, by the way, also named Sue. <laughs> the truth. And we fled the scene of the crime, feeling as deflated as those balloons. On Monday morning in study hall, we had to go into school, and Sue Ritter and I had to confess to Sue Lane and all the other Sues about our birthday blunder. <laughs> you can imagine the ribbing we took, you know, a couple of perfectionists making such a big mistake. Um, but Sue Lane said, hey, it's okay. I saw that wrapped car on my way to the other Plymouth Valari in the parking lot that night. <laughs> so all's well that ends well, except four decades later, I still feel this tremendous guilt. And the reason for that, for that is I think about that couple and how they have spent 42 years <laughs> in a state of paranoia, <laughs> wondering who wrapped their car and why. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the sleepless nights <laughs> and, the, and the false accusations that have been hurled at friends and family members? <laughs> so, um, you know, it feels good I finally come clean to all of you. And I, 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 think, I think there's somebody in here recording this. So, you know, this could go viral. <laughs> and if it does, that couple will finally know who the real culprits were. And I might actually get into trouble for this. But you know what? I figure the statute of limitations must have run out by now. And if not, what are they gonna do? Sue me? Thanks so much everybody for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon.